previously on the season. Collectively, our team can be so much better. Pre-season's one of the hardest, toughest things mentally and physically you'll ever do at the school. I've never got over in one way, shape or form the wonderful camaraderie that exists. I'm guessing a lot of them will feel under an immense pressure because they're trialling for the first 15. So it's a trial for next week and we're, we're trying to practice being perfect for next week. The start of Term 3 means one thing, rugby season, and another opportunity to leave a legacy. Nudgee has a very proud history that I'm particularly aware of. I suppose that goes back to when I'd play trial games against Nudgee College and we were a little bit in awe coming here and we always be on the wrong end of the score. Nudgee College has won the most first 15 GPS premierships. That gives you some idea as to the, the, the quality of teams, but also the importance that the school's placed upon the rugby program. Our school has been by far the most successful school in rugby in the GPS competition. So I think now we're at 40 premierships. It has had an incredibly impressive rugby record over a long period of time, even though it, at stages it's gone through big dips as well. Welcome to The Season, a series that follows the Nudgee College First 15 as they begin their bid to win an unprecedented 41st GPS Rugby Premiership. The journey will be long, with the state's leading rugby schools standing in their way of victory. Both on and off the field, you'll witness the highs and lows of schoolboy sport with the pride of the blue and white on the line. Trial rugby always feels different. It is physical combat, ridden with the sounds of urgency, hope, and determination to impress. Hey, skipper. Hey, skipper. We've got some penalties against you, eh? Good air. GA, yeah, all good? Look, the pick and drive was dreadful. Yeah. Just tell them, like, don't get wide line fever. We've got to make sure we're technically doing that perfectly. Yep. To some degree, the score doesn't matter. But conceding tries doesn't look good on the rugby resume. Right, come in, come in. Get a squirt of water and then we'll talk. Why are we down here? Too many penalties. Ill discipline, too many penalties. Okay, so when we're down that end, let's put them under pressure. Okay, but taking a step. Most first 15 games take ages to win, somewhere in the second half. So we're not trying to get miracle balls away or do anything. Just try and be tight, play the game that we've practiced at training over and over again. The risk of trial rugby is exposing the talented roster to the rigours of a contact sport. So guys are just holding his hammy. Oh, his hammy or his hand? Hammy. Okay, all right, let's go, straight on, quick. So is it a bit no good? Yeah. Yeah, just get ice on it. Good line, Akka. Quick scores to the home team allows the coaching staff to remove some of their key positional players as a precaution. Well done, man. Is it much worse than when you went on? Uh, it's a little bit, not much worse, but I think, I think it's just a bit tight. From yeah, yeah. So just make sure you look after it the next day and a half, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and that's full time, John. So 
So a couple of things before we go. I know Grade 12s have got the formal, and I've spoke to everyone before the holidays about that. That needs to be an occasion that you can enjoy, but it needs to be an occasion that's not going to interfere or have a negative impact on something that's going to happen that's going to take then eight or nine weeks. Righto? So I hope that's a clear message. If you're unsure about that, you come and talk to me about it. But yeah, look, I'm happy. Second half, we got a little bit better, but we've got a lot of things to work on that we've got to be technically a lot better at. We are! We are! We are! So we, yeah, we're just going to go through Monday, Scott, so this will be pretty simple. Yeah. So that'll only be you, and what do you reckon is the total time? Oh, I don't know. Well, well it'll be maybe 45 minutes. So that's another issue, isn't it? Like how many, do we only go with those 15 or do we take? So I'd have like what we think is going to be our starting 15 plus. Almost immediately following the trial, attention quickly turns to the first game of the season. As the school term has also started, schedules have to be meticulously planned to the minute. Friday night. When you look at that too, like Monday is obviously a knowledge loop. Providing a wealth of coaching experience to the on and off field mix is assistant coach Andrew Scottney. Well, I think firstly, I try and build good relationships with players and the guys I'm coaching with. So, you know, communication's everything. Okay, that's perfect. Just run with a little bit more vigour, eh? That's the way they get off the And side. secondly, I think I like the tactical side of the game. So, you know, trying to build those systems and that tactical structure, I suppose, that we're going to try and play with. If we can get one, two and three right, the rest of our defence looks after itself. Scott's is pretty straightforward and having worked with him for the two years, he's very resourceful and he knows what he's doing because he's played before um, and he shows us up every now and then, which is good. He, he's great. He's really helped me develop my skills, make me a better player, also a better person, like, on and off the field. You want, we want to sort of build through the week, don't we? Nudgee College is part of the GPS Association of Queensland, together with eight other schools. The GPS sporting competitions are steeped in history and are notoriously tough to win, especially in the 99 years of the Rugby Union Premiership. It's probably arguably the biggest game in the Queensland GPS and a lot of people pay a lot of attention to what happens to Nudgee Rugby. They play eight games. There's no room for error. That's the first thing. It's more unforgiving than a, than a Super 15, than an NRL competition, and they spend a long time preparing for it. They can't afford to drop a game, they drop a game, and really, they could be out of the running. There's no grand final at the end. It's a traditional premiership. It's first past the post after those eight games. The season's still quite short. You, know, you need to be prepared to the best of your ability and, you know, I suppose, be switched on every week because, you know, if you do drop a game, um, it can be difficult to come back from that situation. It just so happens that Nudgee's biggest game of the year has fallen on round one. A home game against brother school, Gregory Terrace. Yeah, so in about five minutes, the whole school, all 1,500 will come over and we'll uh, run through a few cheers before tomorrow, get in the mood. Nudgy cheering practice happens every Friday afternoon when we have a home game. So we've been doing those all year um, with the entire school body that comes together for lunchtime to do some cheers, practicing for the weekend. The Nudgy Terrace rivalry is a very old rivalry. Basically, Nudgy used to be a part of Terrace, and there's a bit of a myth. There was a game between Nudgy and Terrace, and they got to decide who got to keep the blue and white colours, and Nudgy got to keep them. And ever since then, there's been a long tradition of rivalry playing out this first 15 match. As far as the, 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 the students go, that Nudgy Terrace thing, it's, it's real, it's, it's palpable. Like, it's, it's not a beat up, it's not, it's not made up, it is genuinely real. I mean, those kids would do anything for each other if something was, had gone pear-shaped outside of school, but when it comes to anything they do competitively, it's full on. Every year, I think both teams lift to play each other. This time round, they've got a very good team and we think we've got a very good team as well. So to play under enormous pressure in game one 
is a tough thing to do, but it'll be a magnificent atmosphere here. There'll be thousands of people here, and you know, the boys have got this incredible support behind them. Oh, I think the crowd plays the biggest role. You know, we, we are the 16th man on the field for them. Give them that extra player. You know, when they, they get down, we lead a cheer, they, they're back up. and continuing the 36th win streak here on Ross yeah. tomorrow! Yeah. Don't get up! Yeah. Yes, we are ready! Usually what you're going to see is thousands of people, lots of old boys from each school, It'll be a really big family day, and most importantly you're going to see nearly 1500 boys wearing their blazers in the blue and white singing in this grandstand, cheering their hearts out for their school. Who's going to win? In the middle of Ross, the first 15 have welcomed back its representative players, including Captain Phoenix Hunt, who acknowledges the importance of the captain's run. Oh, just basically get used to the crowd, get used to the boys around, boys again. Um, it's just a real good atmosphere, a real confidence booster for tomorrow. Uh, I mean, it's a real good feeling when the 10,000 brothers are really supporting your back. Oh, just hold at the back and just get ready for any just chips, I guess. But don't go too hard. So then you just stay back here after that. For Hunt, a self-confessed introvert, the captaincy is a privilege, but not a right. I guess it comes with some burdens as well, where you're always looked upon and your mistakes are always uh, mentioned in the team, so I really needed to learn how to keep a blue head on the field and not lose my temper. So, Solly, you can be aggressive on them there. Okay, well done, boys. The position also requires a level of empathy, in this case for second-year player Ryan Shepherd, who has withdrawn due to injury. Get rid of that morning team. You're not, you're playing, you're not playing. Um, we've been waiting for this for quite a long time now. We're working real hard, so we're pretty keen for tomorrow. Tomorrow's Terrace. All right, this is our first game of the season. We want to show you the rest of the GPS who we are. We need you to be the 16th man. We want this grandstand to be filled tomorrow. Not just at 2.15, but throughout the whole day if you can. Just turn up. Remember, if you play, you stay. Support these boys. We've been working hard for six months. Six long months. All right. We need your support. Now, Shop boys. Across town, old boys and supporters have gathered to celebrate the annual matchup between the two schools. Being a professional rugby player, you get caught up in a lot of the politics and the Really, this afternoon is a celebration of uh, St. Joseph's rugby. Uh, what's common between Nudgee College and Gregory Terrace uh, is celebrated here today amongst uh, old boys and staff, and it's a great community event. This has been an initiative of the support groups from both schools and it's really brought together what has been a, a great camaraderie amongst the colleges in a formal sense over many years and everyone looks forward to the Nudgee Terrace game uh, but now on the eve of that game every year we'll have this St Joseph's College Rugby lunch. Sydney we had to go to, over to, to Auckland and one of the things that I think plays with Australia. Tomorrow is an iconic day. Uh, it's one that old boys look back upon upon their day and it's one that our boys today are looking forward to. Uh, to making their mark, whether it be in the first 15, in the 15 Cs, it's an opportunity to be part of something that's bigger than them, bigger than their team. You've got to understand, Nudgee and Terrace, 
families, they all often in the same team when they when they play together at clubs like Brothers. Whilst they're maybe enemies on Saturday, they're best mates and colleagues and uh, and friends on, on Sunday and you know throughout the week. So you know it's a really friendly rivalry. Tomorrow for our boys, yeah, they want to win and they want to do their very best. But beyond school, they become mates. Beyond school, they become colleagues. They go to university. They work together. Tomorrow, the thing that I'm most excited about is seeing our community uh, be together and enjoy their sport. I'm really excited to see our first 15 boys perform at their best, uh, but then also to see many of those other boys pull on their jersey for the first time tomorrow. The medal that you'll have passed to you has been blessed like the medals that are inside your jersey. They're called a miraculous medal. Those medals, and it says on this, this piece of paper that you get there, all who wear it will receive great graces. Graces will abound for persons who wear it with confidence. The symbolism of that medal, I like to think of it in this way, is obviously it's representative of our cultural uh, history, our Catholic heritage. But that symbolism for you is that you're wearing the same medal as everyone else in the team and you're wearing the same medal that everyone who's worn a First 15 jersey for many, many years has worn. But I wanted you to know what's there and visibly what that looks like and what it means to us as a community. All the best, gents. Thanks, sir. Thanks. Tonight was obviously the first 15 uh, jersey presentation, so it's a special evening for, for everyone involved. Um, it's a really nervous time. I know personally, uh, sitting um, on the Friday night for the first dinner, leading into, into probably the biggest game of the year, there's a lot of nerves running through the, through the body, a lot of uh, nervous energy, excitement. Um, I'm sure they all just probably want it to be a kick-off um, right now. When we've got an old boy to come in, it hasn't been a, a difficult decision. We've got access to so many people who are very, very good at that. And the jersey presentation is one of the first formal parts of that, making sure that we keep a really strong connection with the past. So knowing who has worn it, past players, um, those that have worn the jersey before you, um, their legacy, and then being able to provide your own legacy and what you want to do in that jersey and leaving that jersey in a better place. With over 700 boys and 38 Nudgee College rugby teams competing across most home days like today, the action and excitement extends far beyond the playing and coaching personnel. Uh, any of the fields where our boys compete, old boys are on the sideline, parents are on the sideline, staff are there, their mates are there. And when thousands of people are here on a Saturday, it's about community. It's about people celebrating uh, this wonderful school um, and the gifts and talents of some terrific boys. The younger age group games begin as early as 9am, culminating with the first 15 kickoff at 2.15. Today, there is one particularly reluctant spectator. Just a little niggle in the hamstring during the week. Um, I was hoping to play, I trained, did all the training sessions, but um, got ruled out yesterday, so we're sitting this one out, which is pretty gutting, but hopefully the boys can get over the line, yeah. Do another one. Um, anyway, you, where do you want to go? I'm going I'll just be with them um, before the game, stuff like that. Um, just try and encourage them as much as I can in the warm-up. Um, try and keep myself busy so I don't feel too bad. Everyone seems happy. Yeah. They'll be nervous soon though. Uh, I think it'll just be the want. Um, you know, this rivalry goes on forever. And every year, no matter what team, good or bad, uh, whatever the lineup may be, you know, it's always a close game. On a day like today, keeping a blue head means we're not playing with 13 or 14. A little chat from opposition, we're not saying anything back to them during the game. That's a distraction. If we're talking, it's to the guy next to us about something. If some guy goes to pack down opposite Tom Ford in the scrum and says something smart to him, Tom just doesn't even react like the guy hasn't said a thing. 
Right, uh, we're playing off this. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, me. That's really good. All we want from every scrum is that we're rock solid. Everyone knows what to do. Everyone knows what's expected. We're gonna make sure, no matter what happens, we're keeping a blue head. Nothing's gonna disturb us. We're gonna be switched on. We're thinking the whole time. If there's a line out, we're thinking before we get there. But right, I just come in nice and tight. Tell you reckon we should leave here. We are we are we are High tackle here, last defender on the line. Wingo otherwise in the corner. Foul play, go. Thanks, under control. So, unfair challenge in the air, taking him out. No intent to go for the ball. It's you as well. Can I talk to you, boys, first? Can I yeah, talk to yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait. Every school teacher will know you can give a really clear, articulate message around any subject matter to a group of kids, and from time to time, for no apparent reason, it just won't get through. They knew that we could not afford to play at that level with any less than 15 blokes on the footy field. Don't ever come at me like that again. It's a totally different tackle. You hold your ground. With two yellow cards in two minutes, yeah. The 13 remaining men of Nudgy still forge ahead. Roll out and away. Hands off. On the line. Four. Off your hands, four. Yeah. Of more concern is the team's inability to keep a blue head in the biggest game of the year. Next time on the season. Do not speak back to the referee under any circumstance. Yeah, it's full time. That's too many errors, eh? He hasn't called it. Still two to go. Seven to win. Mate, don't take those odds. Like I said before, like, Nudgy boys can sing, but they're lazy singers. For information on a campus tour, rugby clinic, or open day, go to nudgy.com.